Hey guys, and welcome back. My name is Jessica Likewise. I'm studying for my BCBA exam, but I have over a decade of experience doing ABA. So sharing is caring. I'm helping you study with me. Today, we're going to talk about what a superstitious behavior is, so stay tuned. Well, hey guys, and welcome back. Today, we're going to talk about what a superstitious behavior is. I will admit, until I started studying, I had never heard this term before doing ABA for 13 years, but here it is. So a superstitious behavior is a behavior that is occurs because it's inadvertently reinforced. So it dates back to Skinner's research. So back at Skinner's research, he found that when pigeons were given non-contingent reinforcement of bird seed every 15 seconds, what happened is that whatever the pigeon was doing before the pigeon got the bird seed, it assumed that it got the bird seed because of that behavior. And it's, they started to develop these idiosyncratic behaviors and that happened across a large sample size. So most of the time, like today, and obviously we're not pigeons and you know we're not really doing it that way, but today, like how does that actually apply? So most of us know what superstition is, right? We might feel like we have a lucky shirt. Well, that's actually very much related to what a superstitious behavior is. So essentially it is whenever a behavior behavior results in a good outcome, but the behavior and the good outcome are not related, but the person who engaged in the behavior thinks they're related and starts the behaviors reinforced as a result of that, um, that's a superstitious behavior. So let's just talk about, let's say, for example, you go into a job interview and you have a shirt on and you have a really good result in that job interview. So now you think that this is your lucky shirt. Well, obviously, right, the entire purpose of the interviewer who's interviewing the person wearing the shirt, their purpose was to find an employee, not to reinforce you for getting wearing a shirt, but maybe now you think it's your lucky shirt. So that's a superstitious behavior. Now, how does that actually apply to ABA? So let's talk about an example of where a superstitious behavior could occur. So we're going to talk about Angela. So she's rolling around on the couch. Let's talk, let's say that. And let's just say she falls off the couch. Maybe she does it completely accidentally. And Angela is someone who craves attention. Well, her mom, you know, and Angela's not hurt. Let's just say she falls on the, um, the rug, off the couch, off the, onto the rug. She's not crying. She's not hurt. Mom has no way of knowing that she accidentally fell off the couch. She just walks in, she sees Angela on the floor watching TV. Mom comes in, she just like wants to give her daughter a big hug. So she picks her up, she gives her a hug. And now Angela thinks that she got that hug because she fell off the floor, off the couch onto the floor and then mom provided her attention. So now when Angela wants attention, she will roll off the floor onto the couch. Well, that's a superstitious behavior. So essentially she started, Angela started doing that behavior because she, it was reinforced by mom giving her a hug, but mom's intention was not to reinforce the behavior. The two things were unrelated. It just so happens that a behavior um, preceded a positive outcome. So when the two things are not related, so it could have been that, right, mom saw her fall off the couch. And if mom saw her fall off the couch and ran up to her and gave her a hug, it would have the exact same result. Then we would just call it social positive reinforcement, but it becomes a superstitious behavior and it is still social positive reinforcement, but it becomes a superstitious behavior if the person providing the reinforcement or if it's automatically re reinforced, which is sometimes the case, if those two things are not connected. So that's the whole point of what a superstitious behavior is. It's when essentially there's a antecedent, there's a behavior, and there's a consequence. The consequence reinforces the behavior, and yet it wasn't actually related to the behavior. It just kind of happened that way. So I hope that makes sense in terms of what a superstitious behavior is. Um, you know, it's something we do need to look out for when we're doing behavior plans, when we're doing functional behavior assessments. I think it's something that we all know is like, well, sometimes behaviors are inadvertently reinforced, but now we know the technical term for it. So it's called a superstitious behavior. I'm posting all of my study notes on my blog, hopeeducationservices.com. You can get them. They're not edited. They're just my study notes. They're a gift for you. So, you know, don't message me and say like, hey, this is great, but there's grammar mistakes. They're literally my study notes that I typed up, put online for you as a free gift. So head over there, use them. I'm happy studying. Hope everyone passes their exam. And I hope this video has helped you.